Okay, now, can you hear me? Let me know if you can see the slide as well. Beautiful picture of New York and uh, happier times. <laughs> Welcome everyone. My name is Melissa Armo and I own the Stock Swoosh. And tonight I'm gonna talk to you about focusing on one strategy, which is what I do. So I focus on one strategy, gaps, and we're gonna talk about that today. Really, all you have to do if you wanna be successful in the market is one thing but it's gotta be something that works. And it has to work consistently in the market. But you can really simplify your trading by focusing on one thing, okay? One thing and one thing only. Any questions before we get started? Okay. If you have questions after the fact, you can email me at melissatthestockswoosh.com or you can call me at 923200GAP. Okay, so welcome everybody. It's earnings season. It's a great time to trade. It's a fabulous time to trade. It's one of those times where you can make money trading. Why? Because stocks report earnings and they have big moves. And as traders, I'll train those big moves. Some of them we do as options, some of them we do as day trades. We're gonna talk about both today. Today we did Boeing actually, which was not earnings. Boeing has earnings Wednesday, Wednesday morning, but we shorted the stock Boeing today and it worked. It was a nice move. So if you've never thought about trading, now's the time to think about it because of earnings season. And if you've been trading and you're all over the place or not having good results, guess what? You need to think, why is what you're doing not working? Again, common sense. For me, when I started trading very early on, I made a lot of money doing one, one stock, and it was a gap, and actually it was a short. I remember it was Netflix, and I said, gosh, there's something to this. And then I realized it was about size. To make more money, instead of doing trade, 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 it was taking size in something to get the big money. And again, it has to be then what? Quality, 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 which is the focus. So if you're training now and you feel like you're just not making enough money when you're doing a train, then how can you change that? Like, are you scalping? You're doing something for 10 cents, 15 cents? I'm looking for momentum, okay? And again, if you look at Boeing today, the stock opened around 174 and change, dropped down to 169. It was a beautiful, beautiful $5 move today, okay? You didn't need anything more than that trade, whether you had it a beginner size or an advanced tri trade, uh, advanced risk. But a lot of people, they train and they always feel like, I didn't make enough, I didn't make enough, I didn't make enough, okay? You have to get out of that mindset. And again, it may be because you have more losers and winners, which is a problem too. But again, when you focus on something, then you can get really good at it to increase your win ratio. Get it up, okay? And then put the size on, and then you're making more with the winners. Any questions here? So today we will discuss how to make money with one system and even in one direction most of the time and why it is advantageous to traders because again it comes back to the focus and for me i actually do one thing and in one direction and you say well you know why are you why you're missing out on things no this is what gives me this keen eye i mean i just look at it like it's a wide-eyed world every morning where i have all these things to do and then i want to simplify what i'm doing so that i can get the win ratio up and by simplifying it, you actually make more. And I always say to people, people think trading is so complicated, okay? Once you know what to do, it's not that complicated. But many, many people don't know what to do. Think of it like if you were starting out when you were learning a new, something new, a new language or anything, anything you were learning when you were little, okay, when you were a child, when you're, or even a sport, okay? Are you learning a sport or learning how to ride a bike, learning how to drive, all of these things, you start out with the basics. And I think people, again, want to overcomplicate trading. And they do that by having multiple uh, indicators on their charts, 
Some people's charts look like planetary solar systems. My charts are very, very clean. I'm focused just on the gap and just on the price analysis. And for me, I also happen to focus more, mostly on shorting. Um, and, I, and, and this is because I've really created a niche in this because I like to do fast trades and quick trades, okay? So I prefer to short. Now, why? Stocks move lower when selling action or shorting action comes into the stock. The price is driven down. And if you short before the price drops, then you can make money. And shorting happens quick. Why? Because selling happens quick. Why? Because of panic. One of the best reasons to short as a trader is that you can make money very, very quickly, which I personally like to do as a day trader. Another great reason is that very often the downward moves happen in a big way. And this is something that you want to take advantage of as well. Okay, again, I'm going to go back to Boeing because we just did that today. And it moved $5. I mean, it just fell. It got sold off. When panic comes into a stock, sometimes it looks like it has no end. And you don't want to be on the long side of selling action. So you don't buy the stock. But as a trader, guess what? You can short it. And for those of you who don't, who don't or aren't that familiar with shorting, Again, this is what I teach in the class, um, but you can short stocks as equity trades or you can do stocks as a put, okay? Now, a put is an option trade, all right? The only difference between doing an option and an equity trade is with an equity trade, you need margin. You've got to be out of it by 4 o'clock Eastern time. With an option, you can hold it overnight and you don't need equity, there's just a cost associated with it, the cost of the option. But the trade has to move within the set time, there's a time limitation to it, okay? And if anyone has questions about options versus equity trades, let me know. I like to do both, they're different kinds of trading. Anyways, we did a put, which again was like a short in snap. This had earnings, it fell, it gapped down on earnings, and we shorted it by doing a put. We actually did a day trade in it short too. But this is the, the option trade. Cost was really, really cheap. Again, you can load up. 50 cents was one contract in this. You could have taken 150 contracts, risk was $7,500, sold at 90 cents. Profit was 6,000 or 80% return on investment. And what this did was what? It sold off. It gapped down the night before and sold off. So you see here, this is the option newsletter. I call this trade at what time? Very, very early, 6.40 a.m. in the morning. I'm not doing the trade then. All the trades are during market hours between 9.30 and 4, in and out. But the reality is that I'll see something as early as that, okay? And again, this was a short. And if anybody has any questions, let me know. So also, we shorted Apple. We did this last week. I called Apple in the afternoon on Thursday the 23rd. Stock dropped, fell, gap down on Friday. Cost was $10.50. Risk was $8,400. Sold at $19. Profit was $6,800. Return on investment, 81%. So this was a short, this gap down. Again, we did this as an option as a put. Actually, let me pull up the charts here because I don't have them in here. And then we'll go back to the, to the jiggy. Can everybody see my chart? I'm, I'm just gonna pull up and show you the snap and the apple. Can everybody see Snap? So here's where we did the Snap. Snap closed the night before, gap down, plop. So anyways, getting back to what we did, we did an option and we did a day trade, but the stock opened at 23.49 and sold off. Sold off down to 22.46. Followed through the next day, down broke 22, went down to 21.80, okay? So this gap down, we played it, and it fell. Nice follow through here in the snap. So again, I get up in the morning, and my one focus is gaps, and I also focus on shorts. Now, it doesn't mean I never go long, but I go short first. I only go long if there isn't any good shorts, or if there's a long so good 
that it's higher quality than any of the shorts. Anyways, let's go look at the apple. Apple. So, what was Friday? Oh yeah, okay. So we, I called the put here in this, this is Thursday, because I saw the market was gonna gap down on Friday morning, which it did. So again, called the 375s, ran into the number, closed, the trade was up into the close. Low was 368 the day I called it. Again, in the afternoon, dropped, opened at 363.95. It was a nice call. So, so this was a gap down. Here was a gap down. And I anticipated the gap down here Friday, which was correct. Any questions from anybody on those two? Now, getting back, it's like you have to train your brain to see the chart, to see the price analysis. I'm always training it, and I'm training it even to see it in that one particular direction, to the downside, to the short side, which is amazing. Like, that's like I just, I just told you. I, I predicted Thursday the market would gap down Friday. I was right because it was reading the selling action or lack thereof of buying, okay? So when you really get into trading, you can get to the point where you can see something before it happens and that's how you know to take the trade, whether it's buying a put or again, just shorting the stock. Any questions from anyone here? But making money consistently means you have to be good at predicting directional bias. And you've got to do it with accuracy, whether you want to go short or long. It really doesn't matter. It's the idea of predicting it. And many, many people will fight, fight, fight. There are longs in the market. There are shorts in the market. The market was very sloppy today. Who's going to win? The bulls or the bears? This is what it is. It's a constant, constant grab bag for the money. When you're trading and when you make money, you take money from somebody else. You're not making something. And when I win, I'm taking money from somebody else too. Many times it's other traders. You don't create something when you get paid from the market. It's who is making the best choices, the best decisions, and the smartest trade. And that's why you can't go with a group of traders. And you really have to be very focused on what you do. And you can over trade. And you've got to get really, really good at one particular strategy, like I was saying. But shorting is hugely profitable because the moves happen fast. And again, it's due to the panic, this idea of the panic. The panic comes in, and then people do what? They sell, okay? And we'll, we'll look at the market if we have time, if I go back to the charts here. Oh, actually, we can do this after this one here. This was the SPY one that I closed. So I called a huge number of trades Thursday afternoon when I saw the market would gap down on Friday morning. This was pretty a good price. It was the SPY $3, it cost $3. It was the 324 puts that don't expire actually till this week, but it dropped and gapped down and was through the strike on Friday. You could have sold it, again, doubled your money. Sold it for 625. Return on investment was 108%. If you risk $7,500, profit was 81.25. This is a nice trade. So I called this again Thursday afternoon. Let's go and see where the market opened Friday exactly. Here was when I called it. It ran down through it. Low of the day then on Thursday was 321. Boom. Open in the morning, 320.95. Again, this gap down. Again, so we did the put here. It actually gapped down here. Then it gapped down here, followed through. Boom. See that? So you could have taken it here, you get out. Or you could have taken it here and you could still be in it. Okay. Anyways, what was I going to say? I was talking about panic. Oh, yeah, panic. Panic, okay, is what makes for some of these great trades when you get something at such a good price that, one, you have the choice. You can hold it or you can take half out or you can hold half and take half out. Do you know what I mean? So how do I know how to read the panic before it comes into the stock and sells off? I read the gap. That's what I do. That is my strategy. 
And this holds the key to predicting directional bias, which you can use to make money. Okay, and that is what I use to make money, quite frankly. It's, that's the key for me. Pre how do I make money? I predict the direction something's going to go, and I read the gap based on that. And what am I doing? They're called institutional gaps. Gaps made with institutional money. An institutional gap is a gap that moves in the direction of the gap. Like we're shorting gap downs, we're going long gap ups, okay? It is called an institutional gap because institutional money and large professional traders and investors are making and creating the gap, okay? In the case of a bullish gap, professionals are buying the stock. Therefore, the stock moves higher on the trading day because bought, okay? In the case of a bearish gap, professionals are shorting the stock. Therefore, the stock moves lower on the trading day. Gets sold off, gets shorted, okay? Any questions here so far from anyone? Oh, we can go over the we can go over the the Boeing too. Actually, the today's Boeing trade. When, we, when, I, when I'm done. Anyways, why are gaps significant? They help you to analyze a large time frame to make the trend decision on the directional bias for the gap. Now, I'm saying this with caution because that doesn't necessarily mean that I won't do a short in something in an uptrend. For example. Apple's in an uptrend. We did those puts last week. They worked. You did it. You got out. Boom. I know it pushed back today, but you can do something opposite the trend for a day or two. There's nothing wrong with that, okay? We're reading the directional bias of the gap to get the play. Every trade I do is a trade. You take it, you get out. You take it, you get out. These aren't in long-term investments you're beholding forever and ever and ever, okay? And Apple also has earnings out this week. It has earnings Thursday night. So you really wouldn't want to be in anything in a stock like that going into the earnings. Unless, of course, you knew what it was going to do, which you really don't because of the earnings. So all large traders of every kind look at large time frames to make decisions. And for me, my focus is the daily chart. So I take the trades in the one minute for the accuracy, but I'm making the choices on the daily. And institutional traders make choices like that too. They help you make entry decisions and exit decisions based on a small time frame, which again, I use the one minute, which is a high degree of focus and accuracy. That's how I did the trade today in Boeing. Okay, we, we found our way into that with less than a $2 stop today, which was a good entry And when we shorted the Boeing. Using the daily chart to make the decision for the stock pick allows you accuracy in the direction, okay, which is what you want. That's how you're gonna make money. And then again, you wanna get the momentum. And then I use the one minute chart for the good risk to reward. And I always use a stop. Now people have been asking about options. <coughs> I don't use stops for options because you don't need a stop. You're not gonna lose more than what you risk. So essentially the risk is a stop. If the, if the option costs a dollar, that's all you're going to lose times however many contracts you take, okay? And any questions here from anyone? Anyways, gaps are created, the ones that I play, okay, which are the important ones, the significant ones, the ones that I was just showing you, they're created with large institutional money. That is what makes the gap. The professional gaps that happen and play out in stocks are formed by one thing and one thing only, large institutional money. Therefore, you need a way that will help you pick the correct direction to play the gap. And this is the system that I devised. So the strategy I do is gaps. And then I created my own system to pick the right gap each day to play. And I tend to do one trade a day, unless I see that something's gonna happen, like I saw last Thursday afternoon, that the market was gonna gap down. We did a bunch of plays then late Thursday to capture that move to the downside, which worked, okay? But I'm looking for a way to find the gap and play it and confirm that the large money will flow with it. By having a formula to rate and qualify the gap, you get confirmation and conviction that the large institutional money is on your side and then you play it. JD has a question, go ahead. Gaps are an event and create a sense of urgency, like this is gonna happen right now. Thus an action is being forced by participants of the stock. Again, this could be longs or shorts. This is why gap trading is incredibly powerful. You can have panic in both directions, but I, you know, I like the panic to the downside, panic to the upside is rare. Trading gaps is a powerful and profitable way to train because you're trading on the side of power and money and that's what moves stocks, and that's what moves the market. And that's why I don't trade junk stocks, too, like those low float stocks. 
I don't know what you mean by settings. It's just a one minute. I don't know what you mean by settings. I don't look at ticks, if that's what you mean. I think that's too, that's too much. You just have the one minute chart up. Anyways, is there more than one kind of gap to trade? No. You may hear about other types of gaps out there, this gap, that gap, blah, 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 gap fills, whatever. There really is only one that counts, and it's the one that goes in the direction of the gap that's made with institutional money, but I will caution you and say this, that not every gap up is a long and not every gap down is a short. But you don't have hedge funds saying, we're gonna buy the stock today to fill the gap. That does not happen. And getting back to what I was saying about you know, making a good amount of money in the market and trading with size and being on the right side of things, you have to think like an intelligent person when you're trading. And people that do gap fills don't think like that. That is nothing that anybody out there is making any decisions with any amount of money on, okay? When something goes in the opposite direction, it may look like a gap fill. You're not playing it that way. It may or may not fill, quote unquote, the gap. And it is going against what you should be doing 99% of the time, okay? So you either play it or you don't play it. And that's how I look at it. So anyways, for me, I'm, I'm looking for a high degree of predictability. So for me, there's only one kind of gap. It's institutional money. And if you cannot accurately predict something, then there's no way for you to trade it for profit. And there's really no reason for you to trade it at all. And there are days when we don't do any trades. This morning, I liked Haas, but it was very, very spready. It was thin at the beginning of the day. It's By the time it set up, it broke really fast, and I didn't want to chase it, but that was my top watch today. It ended up going without us, and then we ended up doing Boeing. But the two things I liked today worked. Um, but normally, if I get up and I don't see anything that I like, something doesn't rate high, or I don't rate anything at all, like there's not that much to do, which is not the case right now because it's earnings season, I, I won't trade that day, okay? So anything that can put the odds in your favor to trade will give you an edge. So I created my own system to use gaps, which is my gap strategy. It is a 26 point golden gap rating system. It gives you an edge. It reads the price of the gap and using technical analysis on an advanced level, it pinpoints which stocks to trade that day and in what direction. And this is what I use and have been using since I created it, which I, it took about three years for me to create all the points. And I started trading in 2008. It's a long time now. 12 years, you know, going on 13. I've been doing gaps. And again, getting back to the idea of the focus, okay? The longer you do something, the better you get at it. Just like in sports. People that, are, that play tennis, okay? They practice, 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 practice. And they practice and they get really, really good over time. There are many people that are, that are not even on the pro level that are great tennis players. It's very difficult, very tough to get to that level. So many people are good. And many times, with the people that get to that level versus the people that don't, it's not just physical skill, it's mental skill, okay? So you have to have the strategy behind you to be successful as a trader. You have to have good money management too. And then when you lose in a trade, you can't let your emotions get the best of you where you go off kilter and then end up losing all day over trading or then saying you wanna quit, okay? So for me, it's about probability. I look at it in terms of odds. There's either high odds or there's low odds. So the 26 point system, I'm looking for 20 points or more. If it rates 20 points or more, say it's high odds of working in the direction of the gap. Less than 20 points, low odds. It takes me about five to 10 minutes in the morning to rate a gap and that's not that's not rushing it, it's just taking your time. <clears throat> and if you're experienced, you can do it in less time. Now let's talk about the QQQs. I'll pull the, go back to the chart too. This was Thursday. Again, I just showed you a couple of these. We did in the afternoon when I anticipated the market to be gapping down on Friday. We did the 260 strikes in the Qs. And again, you could still be in this if you want to. But this was a reasonable cost, not as cheap as a SPY, 470. 15 contracts cost you 7,050. You didn't have to buy 15. You could have bought one. You could have spent $470. This had a nice move though from Thursday to Friday in the gap. Sold at 930. Profit 6,900. Return and investment was 98%. Typically I'm looking for 50% to 100% on my options. 
but like for example this was these trades were easy because they gapped through the number into the morning the gap down they followed through in the gap and the gap itself when people were already in them which makes it very easy for you to decide where to get out i'll go back and show you the cues in a minute here where we opened on so this here was thursday again running we ran through the strike ran through 260 Low of the day here, this was positive into the close, 256.55, boom. This was a nice trade. Open in the morning at 254. It was, it was a nice trade. And again, I don't think we go anywhere with this. But, you know, theoretically, you still could be in this trade because it doesn't expire until Friday. Um, I was going to say something else. We're talking about the market. Shit, I was just going to say something else. I forget what. Anyways, the key for individual traders is to, like I said earlier, chunk it out. You know, I think too many people look at it like, oh my God, this is going to be the biggest trade of my life. Yeah, I, sometimes I do trades and they end up being really big or bigger than I anticipated. Tesla's been like that this year. BYND was like that last year. Um, but, you know, that's not your goal. Your goal is accuracy. Your goal is to make money. Uh, your goal is to money manage yourself properly and the accuracy. So for me, it's just the accuracy where I can take a trade that, that goes green, that I can get out of it, and then you use that money to take another trade. And again, I think this some people miss the boat with this too. Say you take an options trade, and you're like, I'm gonna hold it, I'm gonna hold it, it's gonna keep going, I'm gonna hold it a week, It's I have plenty of time left. Well, if you're up, and you're up, say you risk $500, and, you, and you're up $500, and you hold it into a weekend, or you wanna hold it for you know extra days, you're at, you have a good return on investment at 100%. If you're holding it, you're kind of just like risking the farm. And then you also can't use that money to take another trade. So not only do you have the $500 that you have invested in the trade to begin with, that's being sucked up to take it, you also have the 500 profit that you're not taking out in booking. So when you think about it, then you have an extra $1,000 that you could be putting back in your account if you would exit that trade with a very good profit, which again, is 100% in this example. So active trading means just that, taking it, getting out, taking it, getting out, taking it, getting out. Do you follow me? But I mean, there's plenty of time left in the year. There's 23 more weeks left in the year. I counted them and looked at them myself, trying to plan my own schedule for the year and see if I'm gonna you know, ever be able to get out of, out of the city this year with the way things are with COVID. But when you think about it, you say, gosh, you know, it's almost August. It's hard to believe what has happened to the country this year and the world. But there is 23 more weeks left in the year. So that's a lot of time. And if you think about it, and again, it's breaking it down. If you can make $1,000 a day trading, this is on average. Some days you'll make less. Some days you'll make more. Some days you may lose. But on average, that would total 230000 give or take holidays. So do you see this? This, does this make sense? A lot of people just can't somehow wrap their head around making any good amount of money trading because the concept of making $10,000 a week or 10, even $10,000 a month, it, it, people have never done it and they just think that they can and they can't wrap their head around it. And then I think people do risky, risky trades to try to hit those numbers. And what do I mean by risky? I mean holding things too long, like I said, doing things they shouldn't be doing in the wrong direction or taking too much size for the size of their cash account. But if you think of it like every day is its own universe, tomorrow you get up, like pretend you're on a diet. You wanna say, well, if, I, if, I, if I'm on this diet for 30 days, I'm gonna lose this much. Oh, okay, fine. But some days may be hard, but you gotta look at it every day. You get up in the morning, today is today. You're gonna do everything right today. You're gonna to exercise, you're gonna eat healthy. Then tomorrow you get up and then you're like, oh my God, nope, you got to do everything right the next day. And then eventually in one week, in two weeks, the month goes by. You're like, oh my gosh, I, 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 I look great. I feel great. I'm sleeping better. And it's the same way with trading. You did everything right every day. You followed your rules. You followed the system. You chunked it out. And all of a sudden, 
you thought you weren't making that much, but then all of a sudden you have thousands of dollars in your account, okay? And I think if people look at it like that, about chunking it, it's gonna help you. Because I know I personally had this problem at the beginning. Once I started doing well, I did have you know very big numbers in my head for myself too. But it, it took time then to get to the point of growing my account that I could risk more. Because you, you have to be conscious of this. If, you're, if your risk is a $500 a trade, and I call an option in Amazon that costs $43 for one share, well, that's $4,300. You can't take that trade, okay? That would be, you know, way outside of your risk parameters. Follow me? So you have to abide by these things. And making money in the market is not just knowing how to trade. A lot of people know how to trade or think they know how to trade, but they lose. You've heard them. You've heard, you hear people on TV talking like that. I've been on with those same people. I, I mean, I've been to webinars where I hear people talking like that. I was on a webinar where we were talking about this in the room last week. I, I, I was just in utter shock. Like I had to like zip myself because someone was talking about gap fills and they were talking about them so seriously like they work. And I thought to myself, I've never heard anyone talk so seriously about, about gap fills, knowing myself that they don't work. And the person was as serious as all get out. So, you know, you, the proof is in the pudding, again, about the accuracy, which is the high win ratio. And it's just, you know, it's, it's skill. You, you do it, you gain the skill. You, you're, you're with me in the room, you start to see it, okay? And people are doing very well with me this year, and I, and I feel like I've been very active this year as far as options and the day trades go, but people are really starting to pick it up. So it's still possible for you to hit this kind of goal this year. Again, if you have a very small account, that may not be possible. You can take a small risk. You can take an intermediate risk. You can take an advanced risk, okay? And I would say one-to-one. -one. So if your goal is to make $1,000 a day, you're going to need to risk $1,000 a trade. Just like I said, one-to-one. -one. And this goes for the options, too. You're looking to turn it over, ideally, one. But that doesn't mean if I'm up 82% going into a Friday, into a weekend, that I'm not going to get out. I would get out. Do you follow me? So, again, some of this is common sense. And if you don't know, ask me. If you don't know where the target is, ask me, okay? And I talk about targets in the class. But the Golden Gap is my system, I created it, and it uses a 26-point checklist to trade. I go through this checklist every morning. The concept, the idea is to find a high probability of directional bias for the entire day. Big moves in the day, early confirmation of my bias in the move between 9.30 and 10 a.m., and precise entries with follow-through and a good risk to reward, which everyone wants, okay? And, and that's the, the other reason why you don't have to overtrade. Because if you're, if you're only making 10 cents, 5 cents, 15 cents on trades, it's going to be hard for you to pull a dollar out of everything. You're going to have to take 5, 6, 7, 8 trades a day. And the chances of them all working are slim to none. Do you see how your odds go up the less trades you take as well for a win ratio? Do you follow me? Because you don't have to put so much at risk all the time. And really, when you get up in the morning, with the exception of certain days, like last week, where I saw the market would go from Thursday to Friday and everything would go together, most days, okay, there's not a million things to do anyways, okay? Most days, there's only a couple really good ones. It's not like you get up and there's a thousand good things, and that's just not, it's just not the case, okay? That's why finding quality is so critical. So the philosophy behind my system is what? To analyze a large time frame to make the trend decision on the directional bias for the gap. And that's mainly what I'm looking for. To make entry decisions and exit decisions based on a small time frame, the one minute chart, for the, this is for the day trades. I'm not doing anything with the one minute for the options. But this has a high degree of accuracy and focus for the, one, for the day trades. Using the daily chart to make the decision for the stock pick allows you accuracy in the direction. And using the one-minute chart allows for good risk-to-reward trades with accuracy, okay? And then this was early morning. Microsoft had earnings. Actually, I'll go show you this. This rallied, moved against us, and then broke late. Um, and I held the conviction with this. Cost was 370. This was after the earnings. Earnings were Wednesday night. I called this in the uh, pre-market before the open. Rate the gap in the open. Again, Options come as an email if you want to sign up for the options newsletter. Risk is 7,400, sold at 10. This is a beautiful trade. So this fell with everything else, Thursday into the close, into Friday. 
profit 12,600, 170% return on investment. You could have done two contracts, okay? You could have done one contract. You could have spent $370, okay? And made a good amount of money, really, when you think about it, for 24 hours. This is taking it Thursday, getting out Friday. Now let me go back to the Microsoft chart. We actually did this as a day trade got stopped, lost, failed. I didn't go back into it. We did something else, but I kept the put on. Let me just see here. Put was down, if you took it, in the morning, and then it went up. And through the strike. I didn't look at this today here, actually. It's taking so long. There it is. So this tail was in fact, let me, I'll go to the 15 minute, but this closed here, this gap down, again, this is the open. So the stock opened at 207.19, rallied, went up to 210.92, almost went up to 211, dropped, we, we stopped at the day trade. But I play all my trades out for the options. They either win or lose. So this was either going to go bust or work. But anyways, this worked. Fell, dropped gap down here, opened then at 200 fell. This was a no nice trade. Now, on the day, talk about having conviction and, you know, reading this accurately. It was green all the way up here. So I'm going to go to the 15 minute and just show you. What day was that? The 23rd. Here's the open. This is on Thursday. Rally. Big fat green bar. Then goes over the high. 945. Here's the number where it touched 210.92. Here's where it broke. Boom, boom. Broke the low then noon. And then it just fell off a cliff. But anyways, this big green bar is the tail on the, on the daily being formed. So this was solid green and we were in it short. I, I, you know, I don't kill them, but I bet there was some people on the options letter that killed that trade that thought it wasn't gonna work. It was a nice call though. Um, but that fell with everything else then Thursday afternoon into Friday. So how did I determine Microsoft was the correct gap to short? Because I got up in the morning, I rated it, it rated per my 26 point system too short to take it in the direction of the gap, which was a gap down. So then I did the day trade, the day trade stopped. I could have retaken the day trade. I didn't, but I could have. And then I did the put, which went on to work. So when I call a trade and a day trade and the option in the same stock, it probably has a high odds of working, just so you know. Some people are in their trading room and some people are in the options letter doing both. But I got up early, rated the stock, and rated it to determine that it was going to fall through lower. Again, you don't, you, you don't know. I don't know if I, if I get up in the morning, if it's gonna break at 9.30, 9.35, or you know, 12.02. You, know, you play these things out and you see how they go. Now, Friday was another earnings. Friday was INTC. This was a beautiful short, just a beautiful short here. This was earnings too. What did this one do? Closed here, gap down. So this is Thursday night. Stock closed here around 60 and change, boom. Got up in Friday morning, this open here around 52, fell. And I want to point out that this was falling and fell continuously and the market flipped on Friday. Flipped, went green into the close. This was a day trade. I did not call any options in this. I just, just didn't. Uh, there was just so many on on that on the previous day. I just, I didn't even look at the price of this to be honest to see if it made any sense to do it. I think this was a, a better day trade though. Entry was fifty one seventy. Stop fifty two forty five. Shares four thousand. Risk three thousand. Boom. 
fell. Again, this is a short. Exit, 49.91. Profit, 71.60. This is just in one day. Now, the risk was 3,000. Actually, let me pull up the chart here of that. It's Friday. <sighs> oh, I didn't look at this today. Look, this kept going. I forgot to look at this today. Shoot. Well, I could have called an option on this. Look at this. It's a 49 and change. Okay, so INTC looks like fell today. I did not look at this this morning. Ooh, this did fall today. It is falling right now. Wow, look at it. I forgot about this. It's just too much going on. Anyways, you could have shorted this today. Look, this is falling as we speak. Anyways, here was Friday. Nice, beautiful bar. Again, this is a 15 minute. And you could have retaken this. And this is selling off right now. Wow, look at this. I don't know what's happening here, but look, people, this is selling off right now. This is actually gapping down live right now, tonight. As we're talking, it's even lower. Let me just see if the market's doing that too. No, not really. Yeah. This looks nice. And I didn't call any options in this. Shoot. Anyways, this was a good short. This is the day we did it. And then look, you could have done it today. Um, I will have to remember that one for tomorrow. It's weak. But again, that is a short. Any questions here so far? But the, you know, the time it takes to make money trading gaps, which can be just in minutes or even an hour or two hours, whatever, it, it makes it very attractive to trade gaps. Because the moves can happen in seconds, it could happen in minutes. Even to be in a trade for an hour, quite frankly, is a very short time. It's so, 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 so rare that I would take a train in the morning between 9.30 and 10 and be in it till 4 o'clock. It's not that that never happens, but it's very, very rare. So my strategy on Golden Gaps is a great risk-to-reward payout. And again, that creates the high income potential where you can take one train and you can make two times 200%. And then even if you lose in one trade, you're still up, okay? So the wins, again, you have to have more wins than losses, and then the wins make more than the losses to cover the losses. So that's your positive. So I'm typically looking for one to one, maybe two to one. In something like the trades from Friday where they were gapping into the number, that was, that was easy. The market just does it for you. Occasionally, I will say, this looks so good, it's going to the dream target, whatever. Like tomorrow is McDonald's. I don't know if that's going to be a good gap or not, but that's a stock that can move a lot. Boeing is out this week, Wednesday morning. That's a stock that can move a lot, okay? So stocks that can really, really move big, Amazon, Apple, they're out this week too. Sometimes you can hold them to the bigger target. And again, it goes back to the quality of the gap rating. It's, it's momentum, okay? We're looking for momentum. And also, it depends if you have the market with you or have the market against you. But if you're at a point where you're like, I'm home, I'm working from home, it's quarantine still for many, many people, you can trade on the side and work from home, and you can do it and make part-time income. But I think this year it presents an opportunity for a lot of people who would never be able to spend the time trading in the morning, but can without their boss necessarily knowing, or they have the quiet time or space at their computer at home where they can trade and then still get their job done and work on the side and start to test the waters of the market. It's just one of the things that they're, that, you know, is an, it, trying to turn a positive or a negative situation into a positive this year. You know, you're home, people wanna be going out, but if you are home, take this and say, you know what, this is the year I'm gonna teach myself and learn how to trade. You know what I mean? If you think with a plan of action and you're practical about creating what you want, for the future, where you see yourself, like I said, by January 1st, 2021, within one year from now, five years from now, you can combine reality into your dreams so that you can create them because many people I find, they just lose sight then of what reality is and then they give up on their dreams when there's no reason to, okay? 
But if you if you don't think rounded about making good choices about your trades, and that's a different story. So you have to really think grounded. And and again, if say you started an, a, an account and you're trading a five thousand dollars in the account, well, you shouldn't risk five thousand dollars in one trade. That doesn't make any sense. You shouldn't risk half your account in one trade. Okay. So anyways, my class is called the Golden Gap Course. It teaches a 26-point professional bearish gap rating system. Again, I focus on one thing, gaps. I like to focus on shorts, okay? Hopefully we'll get some good shorts this week. The purpose of the system is to help you evaluate which gap to trade each morning using a checklist. And I do that every day, and that's the benefit of being in the trading room with me. Anything that can put the odds in your favor to trade will give you an edge. My edge is I can see what's going to happen in the pre-market before it happens in the live day, before the open. And I also can read the first five, 15 minutes of the day of anything that's trading to predict where it's going to go in the day. And sometimes I can read it the day before, like last week on Thursday to Friday to see what gap down. So, you know, that ability of reading price gives me an edge. And I can be very nimble in my, uh, in my trades to get those one minute entries with precision. But it's... If for some people say, well, that's aggressive. But for me, you know, I'm prepped so early. I get up, you know, even now, I get up 6 a.m. See the market, check the market, have my coffee, exercise, come back, do my ratings, figure out if there's any good options I want to do, figure out what I want to day trade, get organized. I don't rush it. I give myself plenty of time. And then I'm done early. So, you know, I, 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 I'm an early morning person. I get up early, I get organized in the morning, but then I'm done. You know, unless, unless for some reason I'm, I'm watching stuff like last week from Thursday into the, into the Friday morning. But, you know, most afternoons I'm not trading. Anyways, it gives you an edge, the system. It reads the price of the gap and uses technical analysis at an advanced level, which pinpoints which stocks to trade that day and in what direction. And it's always in the gap. It's the gap, the gap, the gap. The high probability is in the quality and detail in the rating system. This is what you'd learn from me. If you want to come and learn my system, you learn the 26 points. Then I teach you all the entries. And then if you want to join the room after the class, I call the trades live in the room. The entries and the exits, like we did Boeing today. And actually Boeing today, to be honest with you, really went to the dream target considering it wasn't earnings today. It was around 170, 169 and change and it dropped and fell. It does not take a lot of time to go through and rate something. It takes a lot less time to do that than it does to sit at your computer, really, when you think about it, for six and a half hours trying to find something to do, you know, on any given day. Spending an hour in the morning prepping will save you so much time on the live day when you're looking for trades to make money. So I go through the checklist. This is what I teach in the class. And the Golden Gap course teaches the strategy, the 26 points, how to find the best system, uh, find the best stock to trade. And really, we do focus on shorts. Now, again, this doesn't mean that I never go long. But, you know, if I go long, like we went long Apple, it was a great, it was a great call. It was a huge trade. Like it's got to be so good for me to want to go long it. You know what I mean? Like, like that's just like how I look at it. I just think shorting is easier. And I think a lot of people don't know how to short right. Again, the short moves, the selling happens quickly. If someone said to you, you can make $1,000 in five minutes, you can make $1,000 in six and a half hours, which one would you take? And you take the five minute pick. So, you know, everybody likes to make money fast. Anyways, the class also teaches students how to play the stock on the day, which is the entries, chart analysis, and technical analysis on an advanced level. So it's a complete system. And again, we do talk about many of these things that have to do with how people think about uh, money, and wealth and risk and, and really fear, which is prevalent right now. All across the country, many people are afraid of the virus. And, you know, there's just so many, so many things going on right now in this world. You, you almost can be overwhelmed by it all. But if you close the door in your office and you get focused and say, I'm going to take advantage of this opportunity while I'm home now to get this trading thing down, make money, move forward this year with my trading, I, you know, I think that's a great plan of action and a great goal. So again, I teach my class once a month. It's called the Golden Gap Course. It's a full two-day course on how to strategically find, pick, and play stocks that are professional bearish gaps. And the class is online. 
So I had a class for this weekend. It's already full. I try not to take more than a certain number of people each class so I can get through everyone's questions. I'm teaching the class live. It's online. The next class, and I added a class then for the 8th, August 8th and 9th. It's earning season. It's just a, just a busy time and people want to train. So if you want to do the class in August, there's still spots for the 8th and 9th class. Cost is $69.99. That includes the class, the two days. And then once you do the class, you can join the live trading room. The trading room is $500 a month after the class. But I think a lot of people's mindsets, they've just overcomplicated trading by losing, thinking they have to do all kinds of fancy things. What I do, and again, if, if any of you sign up for the class and never do the class, you'll be amazed at how much sense everything makes then. And then you'll, you'll also believe that you can do this once you understand it. It's just understanding it. Now, I'm doing some earnings season specials for the options. For, this is you know nothing to do with the golden gap. That is a system I used to call the options trades. But if you just want to trade options, you can sign up for the options newsletter uh, one year for $69.99 and includes the gap options course free. I'm doing through the end of this week, through Friday, okay, the, which is the 31st. And the gap options course, if you want to do the five months, which would be now through the end of the year, I'm doing a, a half annual subscription, but it does include the gap options course as well for $39.99. So that gives you five months. And that is more than enough time to be on the letter and get the trades. And again, if you want to learn how I make the calls, that's in the big class. This is a half day options course. If you just want to learn about the options, it does include one month of the options newsletter. And I do have people in the letter that have never traded options before. And then I have experienced people too. So it's, it's kind of a mix. So let's go look at the market here right now since I had it up and just see here. Gosh, look at this INTC. Here it goes. It's selling, it's up 45 right now since we pulled it up. So here is where we close today and this is the market. <laughs> so we rallied today. Well, we really rallied this morning. We gapped up a little bit this morning. Then we rallied on some positive vaccine news, but I don't know why, because it's really no different than the news we heard last week or the week before that or the week before that. I think they're gonna have a vaccine by the end of the year, which they've been saying for more than a month. So this is really kind of like a nothing burger rally to me. So I don't think this is really a long in here today. Theoretically, you could have gone long at the right point today, but it was very slippery slope. And I think this week is a touch and go for the market because of Amazon and Apple are the big movers from, th and, and actually even Boeing. Boeing can move the market this week, Wednesday morning, because that affects the, the Dow or the diamonds. But it's a very active time to trade. And for those of you that are interested in the options letter, if you know you want to sign up for that, sign up before, sign up before Tuesday. So you get these trades that I'm going to call whatever they happen to be this week in these big stocks because they're going to move. It's a very interesting times, very interesting times to trade and um, very interesting times to be alive. And I think you got to look on the bright side of things where you are and try to stay positive because you can turn on the news at on any channel at any given point in the day right now and, and you can get you know, you can get really depressed. You gotta stay focused on what's happening in your own life. Stay focused on the positive things. And again, this time can present an opportunity for you to make money with your own abilities to learn how to trade and really hunker down this year. Especially if you're in a place right now where you're quarantined or you can't get out and you gotta stay at home. I know a lot of the places shut down again. Any questions from anyone at all? All right, McDonald's is a watch for tomorrow morning, people. If you do have questions, you can email me. Here. Thank you, Kathy. If you want a trial for the trading room, you can email me too. 
I see some familiar faces in here already. Listen, stay safe, everyone. Very good. Have a great night.